Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. This is the second reading of a series where there's, uh, it's like a conversation with two major arcana cards. I laid all the cards out on the table uh, and I allowed them to pair up with each other. And I thought I knew some of the pairings were the way I expected, but then others like this one were not. And they are the magician and temperance. And in this deck in particular, they do, right? They have something in common, right? This focus on something, but there is a difference that's going to come out. So I have a message from the magician, one from temperance. Then I have uh, a line that is the two of them combined. And then I have some advice that comes from this deck, the Shadowscapes tarot deck. The magician begins with the lovers. What do we love? How do we see what we love? How do we, how are we in relationship with what we love and with what we desire? Now the bottom of the deck is the fool showing up from the first reading and it was this deck that the fool came from. The magician asks for, for passion, for desire, for a willingness to take chances, to take risks, to uh, perhaps throw caution to the wind sometimes to not concern ourselves with what other people think or what the, you know, kind of usual way for doing things is. Now, interestingly, below the lovers is this two of materials and then also the four of emotions. And then even the two of cups, there's something here about ways that we can impede our ability to be the magician, to manifest what we want. So we can be, right, we can be too concerned with physical things. We can get caught up in maybe thinking about cause and effect in thinking about uh, requirements or duties or shoulds. We may have a lot of shoulds. Uh, we may get caught up in thinking too much about reciprocity, that things have to be exactly equal, right? This, this balance idea. I've really sort of gone off the word balance recently. I don't know what it is, if it's maybe because it's everywhere, um, kind of in, in spiritual circles, at least, right? You need balance, work-life balance, all these right balance. You need to have, you know, a balanced diet. Um, and it feels restrictive to me now, this idea. And then we have this four of emotions, which is, you know, about boredom apathy, uh, dissatisfaction, um, regret is sort of coming through a little bit. Um, and then with the two of emotions, the two of cups, it may be that you get really caught up in other people, in your relationships. Now below them, actually, I'm going to 
point her out is this queen of pentacles who always feels like right like she's leaning out through that magic portal and saying i dare you i dare you and so we have the four materials and this card changes for me depending on the reading sometimes she seems really preoccupied, right? She can't, she totally cannot see that there's this giant rose overhead that's so beautiful. She's just, right, she's preoccupied, over-focused on these other blooms. But at other times, she comes through as just very sensuous, right? Like she's feeling all of these roses in her body like she's really smelling their fragrance and you know perhaps feeling their velvetiness on her skin she can really um she is savoring basking in luxuriating in these roses so which do you do and then the night of emotions um, romance, uh, a little bit of excitement, um, interest, daring, the knights are daring, uh, dedication as well. Do you have these for what it is that you want? How do you see these things that you want? Do you see them as fully attainable? Um, do you see yourself as having to, you know, wrestle them to the ground and drag them home? Or that you can seduce them, that you can romance them, that you can magnetize them, that you can be so vibrationally charming that they cannot resist you? Six of voices, six of swords. And for me, this card is the follow your inner guidance card, right? There you are. You're, you know, it's kind of a, seems like a quite a leap, but you are held, right? These pointy things down here are irrelevant because you are held. Do you follow those intuitive nudges? Do you follow your wider self's knowing? And then the Ace of Emotions, the Ace of Cups, do you pay attention to your, to the emotionality of your desire? What is it, what will you feel when you receive this thing? You know, if it's money, let's talk money. You want a whole bunch of money. You want a million dollars. What does it mean? What does it mean to have that? How does that feel? What is that freedom? Is a choice? And do you think in terms of positive things, right? Because one can think about, um, you know, if I have a million dollars, I don't have to go to work. So this is, Right, it's a positive thing, but there's this kind of don't aspect to it. It's a little, right, there's a little bit of a resistance negative thing in there. As opposed to, you know, if I had a million dollars, I could travel all the time. I could, you know, do my art all the time. As a do, as a as an expansive, what is the expansive feeling of what it is you're trying to achieve? So we have the sun. This is both clarity and energy, but also in this card with the Zodiac, 
Um, the Zorya is the dawn in Slavic traditions. And there, this is making me think of what the, how the Three of Cups sometimes comes through for me, which is as united will. Do you have united motivation? Have you, you know, integrated your different desires? Can you, you know, or is there some part of you that sees them as contradictory? Can you find ways to bring your motivations into sync with one another so that they are in synergy rather than in opposition? Below that is the Three of Wands looking outward. And this is the Three of Wands first appearance. Excitement. Enthusiasm. The ability to see in your mind's eye in some way. And it doesn't have to be visually as a picture if you don't find that sympathetic, right? It can be a feeling, it can be, you know, conversations that you have, it can be um, how your body feels when looking out to this future. And there is in the Three of Wands too, especially you know, in these cards, she's still, she is, she is okay, right? Where she is, she, she's good, in fact, she's better than okay where she is. bottom of the deck is the devil in this goddess uh, thing and coming out as temptation and she is a goddess of the sea do you think small or do you allow yourself to see the ocean right are you thinking in terms of puddles lakes or the ocean and how the ocean feels if if that is what you desire maybe it isn't you know maybe you maybe you like lakes or rivers but do you allow yourself to think big because thinking too small having that kind of self restriction is right that's another aspect of this two of pentacles And then the Seven of Swords, which feels to me like trying to keep sort of too many outer ideas. You know, maybe it's listening to a bunch of different people and all of their needs or their suggestions or their opinions. Maybe it's in your own mind if you haven't done the work of synergizing your motivations so that you're having these contradictory thoughts and you're trying to hold on to all of them and that that can uh be an obstacle too and then there's this lovely six of cups and this is also where the six of cups begins and we'll talk more about that as we go so this six of cups is about overflowing about you know watering your own garden about nurturing those things within you that right you have needs this is about filling your own needs. And because it is the Six of Cups, it does talk about childhood and the past. Maybe your cup didn't get filled. Maybe your needs were not met when you were little. Have you carried that lack forward with you? 
or are you able to see and receive having all your needs fulfilled? And then this two of cups, can you envision a way that you and your other person can both be fulfilled? That there isn't a win-lose thing here, that there isn't a need to consistently compromise for somebody. Are you able to believe that it's possible for two people to both fulfill their needs and to feel satisfaction together? And then Kuan Yin here with sacrifice. Are you thinking that you need to sacrifice something? That you need to give something up that if you don't, right? This is back to the Two of Pentacles reciprocity. That in order to show the universe that you're, um, that you're worthy, that you have to sacrifice something. That's an old custom. We certainly did that in the ancient world. We sacrificed something to the gods to prove our loyalty, to prove our worthiness. And maybe you think you need to do that in some way, that if you're going to receive something really nice, that you have to lose something. Or that you have to struggle or work really hard or be extra virtuous. So how, how might you be blocking your inner magician's ability to create? And this is about lots of things. It isn't, you know, just about money or houses or lovers. It's about the inspiration to write a book or start a business or take a trip or even write the inspiration to want to help others, you know, to, to start a charitable organization, to um, to go on a mission somewhere. And that there's resources and personal energy and, you know, events perhaps lining up in your life to make these things possible. So anything that you want to bring into being, are you nurturing it? Are you watering it? Are you seeing it as possible? Are you knowing yourself as worthy? Then temperance. And this particular temperance card is especially about this idea of alchemy in association with this card because she's here mixing these dragons, water and fire. She's mixing them into a new creation. So here, this also speaks of creation, but this is internal. Rather than bringing something into manifested reality. This is about how you are internally, how you move through the world, how you are in relationship with the events in your life. And the first card here is making waves. Momentum is building. It's your time. Achievement. How do you, how do you 
see your life? Right? Is it a struggle? Is it static? Sort of unchanging? You know, because you could really want to change. But because you have a belief that you can't or that, you know, nothing ever changes, that can block you even if you want, really want to change. You know, you may not, sometimes people talk about uh, fear of change or resistance to change. And uh, interestingly, this card came out in the Taurus reading. And Taurus is often said to be resistant to change, right? Tauruses don't, they're fixed earth, they don't like to change. But I don't think that that's true. I think the change is natural, right? Nature, and we are part of nature, changes. But the fixed signs don't like to be forced into change. They like to make their own way. And it doesn't even mean that they move slowly, right? A charging bull is moving fast, right? A stampede of bison across the prairie is fast and thunderous and filled with energy and motion. But it, you know, it may take its time starting, can take its time stopping. It just wants to move at its speed. But if you have a belief, maybe that you're Taurus and that means that you have trouble with change, then it might mean that you have trouble with change. You can make these things real for yourself. So what sort of momentum is building for you? Do you kind of build, and this is a little contradictory, but do you build a momentum of stillness or stuckness by saying, you know, nothing ever changes, things are always the same, you know, I have trouble with change, I can't change, right? All of this stuff, I, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to keep saying it. Or do you say, you know, it's natural to change. I can be good at change. Things change all the time, right? And below this, we have jump in. Adventure, say yes to change. And the bottom is immerse yourself. Training, learning new hobbies, passions. Immerse yourself. Sometimes that can be a barrier too to change. Um, the right the whole nature of it right that you that you do kind of have to immerse yourself in this new thing i mean you can take your time right like moving slowly into the ocean or getting in at the shallow end of the pool but eventually you are immersed and this can feel a little scary All paths lead home. Inner authority, intuition, turn your gaze within. What is, what is maybe the maze or the labyrinth that you've built for yourself? Maybe you have a mental labyrinth that you kind of are always following to try to get to the center. And maybe you don't have to. I 
I want to say that she is contemplating instead of, you know, sort of following the path through the labyrinths, just walking straight to the center, stepping over the stones rather than, than doing it, you know, by rather than following the path. Can you cut through, just walk to the center where where you could find your full self. Thank you. Gratitude, appreciating what's sustaining you. And, and this receptive feeling, this openness, this openness to immersion, Openness to change. We talked in the full reading a little bit about baptism. This immersion process. And that in the ritual, when you rise up out of the water, you are new. You kind of reclaim yourself. And that may be a little, a little scary, perhaps, to be wholly new, to let go of really practiced ways of, of being. And so we have we the Hathors, deep love, mother's milk, birth as a portal. So the baptism is a rebirth. And the alchemical process is, right, you, you reduce something all the way, either you, cal right, either it's calcination, reducing something down to ash, or it's dissolving it in another medium, the solve, and then you get coagula bringing it back together in its new form. And these are all, right, they're all metaphors for how we can be reborn, that we don't have to continue doing things the same way over and over again. And so we have death, the death card coming out. And with this infinity symbol, the, the ability to do this repeatedly, that we may do this many times in our life. Uh, below that is the source of fire and the scout of water. Fire and water together again. that we can mix these things together. The scout of fire is actually at the bottom of the deck. And who's next to him? Oh, the five of air and this moon gazing moose. Judgment. Right? And, and this particular judgment, very new, very rebirth energy. Um, I think this is meant to be a hummingbird, but it's got some phoenix vibes going in this card. Now we have the six of cups again. And here with nurturing yourself, compassion for yourself, right? Having, having compassion for this newly born self, right? You're going to be born, you're going to stand on your spindly little legs. <laughs> it may feel awkward initially, 
But if you've watched animals like that, giraffes, right? They're born, they have those long legs that look so sort of fragile, but within hours, they're moving with some confidence. All right, as soon as they get moving, the blood starts really pumping and moving. The muscles in action. And just be gentle with yourself through that process of this alchemizing of who you were into who you want to be. You know, and there's often talk in the spiritual community, right? Be who you really are. And I would say that that is true in the sense that that you want to remember that you are not just physical, but also spirit, that your energy and vibration. But I think that to some extent you can choose to be who you, who you are, right? You can choose to be the person who has everything that you want, who feels good all the time. I would say don't worry so much about seeking out, you know, who you really are. Who do you feel like? Who do you want to be? Because you do have this opportunity. Now in astrology, there is actually a technique that kind of speaks to this, which is secondary progressions mostly sun, right? Sun and the immediate personal planet, sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars. So progressions are where we move the chart, right? Because the chart continues after you're born each day. So each year that you are alive is a day in the chart. If you understand what I mean, look it up if this is confusing. Right, so when you are 30 years old, your sun will have moved about 30 degrees. So you may be born with sun in Taurus somewhere, but then when you hit 30, you're going to have a sun in Gemini. And when you're 60, you'll, you'll have a sun in Cancer. And the moon moves even faster than that. It spends about two years ish, two and a half years in each sign. So there is right there, you know, in different times in our lives, <coughs> excuse me, different things may be really important, may light us up. Right, three of fire, three of wands appearing for the second time. What is it that lights you up now? What, what kind of things are you interested in? And if so, what, you know, who, who is the person You know, maybe you're interested in having some sort of adventure, but you've never really thought of yourself as an adventurer. But maybe you can be. Five of fire. This also can be a little scary. We know this. But it's okay. It's okay. Being a little scared. I mean, we can, we can think of that as excitement, right? There's the blood is moving. So the two decks together. Six of cups once more. And actually, while I'm talking about it, the six of cups also appears at the second bottom to this deck next to the fool as the six of emotions. 
So that's another nod to childhood. And, you know, when you were a child, you may have had the ability to be many different things, right? To be a pirate or a princess or a, um, an adventurer or um, an engineer or, uh, you know, a, a seagoing creature, um, right? There were, there were ways that you could be different things, that this shape-shifting, Right? There is this shape-shifting element that's kind of sitting here a little bit. Uh, flexibility. But this Six of Cups is talking about leaving, right? G going out the door. Just go, you're going to leave and step out into the street. Um, the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Wands. And looking at the Ace of Wands is this Knight of Pentacles. So I want to say that it, she looks a little, right? She's a little disheveled a little bit. <laughs> She's kind of dragged herself through some bracken, through some shrubbery. But the Knight of Pentacles is there. The Knight of Pentacles totally has her back. And that is true for you too. And interestingly, we have also a Four of Cups, but a very different Four of Cups. I see this as a very dreaming Four of Cups. I right? like just lying there in the sun, having a vision of something really gorgeous and lovely. This isn't boredom. This is imagination set loose. And I think that's where that's the right, the the combining point is imagination and the willingness to take the risk. Because then we also have the two of wands, followed by the three of pentacles. And I sort of see this as right. She she's had an idea. She's considering how to proceed. What is the ritual? What is the magic spell? And then she does it. And this leads to the sun. To light, to clarity, to knowing, to success. And at the end, interestingly, we have the Eight of Pentacles. And I want to say that this is about doing it all again. None of this is a singular event. Right? The deciding what it is that you want or deciding who you want to be. how to create the alchemical mixture in yourself, how you combine fire and water within yourself, action and receiving as you move through the world. And that you do it again and again. And that this should not be seen as tedious, but as exciting, that there's always a new opportunity for creation or reinvention for new alchemy. So interestingly, the first advice card has this image, right? For here, focus. What we want, who we want to be, and this new world that is created with a combination of these two things. Um, and then below that is the Page of Wands, and also actually the Queen of Cups, more fire and water. The bottom of this deck is the Three of Wands reappearing. Right? Adventure. 
ready to, to set out. And you're not like the fool here. You have some companions. You've had some experience. You've got a bit of a plan. You've been inspired to go in a very particular direction and you're gonna go. Page of Pentacles. The, the student. Whatever it is that you do, whether it's you make a creation. I mean, you know, if you like created $10 million for yourself in some way, there would be a learning curve there. There is stuff that you need to learn. You know how to handle $10 million. That's a, right, that's a learning curve. Or if you start a business, or you have a child, or you move to a new country, that's a learning curve. Or if you decide, right, that you want to be an adventurer, if you decide that you want to be, you know, more extroverted um, or more, right, more gregarious, more social. Or maybe you want to be happier, right? Like you want to be somebody who just feels good all the time. There's going to be a learning curve. And part of that right? Nine of Cups is learning to manage your emotions, right? As all these wishes are fulfilled for you, that's going to bring new emotions. It may be really stimulating. It might even be overwhelming in a way to have just what you wanted or to find yourself being who you wanted to be. So learning, part of the learning curve is learning to manage your emotions. Actually, that right, that's another aspect of temperance. Uh, the real, the literal meaning of temperance, to temper, to moderate. How to moderate your own emotions so that they don't, so that they're not overwhelming. Chariot, the ability to move, the ability to change. You know, this is the moon card and the moon changes every day in her cycle. as She moves around the earth. Getting really comfortable with change. And also the two of swords, getting really comfortable choosing over and over and over again. Getting comfortable combining head and heart. Every time. Now, I asked a little bit about all of these instances of the Six of Cups. And I actually went and looked in this deck for the Six of Cups, and she sits between the sun and the tower. <laughs> inside the deck. I don't know if I can find her really quick now. There she is. So this Six of Cups sits between the sun and the tower. So the, right, enlightenment and then the willingness to take the risk. And the cards that came out just for the Six of Cups clarifier, this was on the bottom of the deck. So that may be what has been up until this point. Then we have the Knight of Wands, the invitation to go on an adventure. This freedom energy. More freedom, the weight of a snowflake. And then the star. <laughs> so these six of cups speak to releasing yourself 
from obligations, from old beliefs, from ideas about, you know, whether or not you can change, from ideas about whether or not you're worthy. Anything that you got programmed with when you were just little, releasing yourself, taking the indication of the Knight of Wands, of the Magician, of Temperance. So I hope this was interesting, informative, enlightening, helpful. And we're gonna, we're gonna go on. High Priestess next and her partner. I wish you the very, very best. And I will see you next time. So long.